Yeah, so today, uh, since this is an academic uh, event and mostly there are faculty and many of you are, I'm sure are part influential in the curriculum design, I'm going to give express some of my thoughts on uh, what needs to change to be able to adapt to the industrial 4.0 from a purely academic perspective. I think there is there are a lot of talks which have said what industry 4.0 is and how it's going to change the industry and how it's going to change the skills required. And uh, Shivakumar also highlighted the NASCOM McKinsey report, highlighting the fact that there is a problem that we are facing as when it comes to education. So what are the characteristics of industry 4.0? And uh, for me, the prime characteristics are there's going to be a very high degree of automation. Uh, there is going to be manifold automation and this is going to be uh, assisted by intelligence everywhere. So even the automation itself, earlier every automation had to be built in by human experts. So whatever they knew, they encoded it into machines and the machines automated the tasks. But now with machine learning and artificial intelligence, that automation itself is going to be learned by the machine. It's no more. So image recognition is something, it's an automation. But it's learned. There's no one, no expert encoding for how to do image recognition. It's very getting learned. And there is going to be very complex interconnection. So cyber physical systems, which are connected through Internet of Things, and so extremely complex systems. These are the primary characteristics of uh, industrial revolution. At least industry 4.0. At least as far as uh, how we should be preparing students of today. Or if you look at this, then they, they're going to be well prepared for handling themselves for several years to come. And we need to be looking at how to build them for the next 20 years of their career as opposed to the next three years uh, of their career. And I think that's uh, very critical. Yeah. So what are the skills that are required? You can look at various places and these are some of the skills that will come up very commonly. A very complex problem solving. So problem solving is, uh, even if they're writing programs, they're going to be so interconnected with other systems to finding bugs in their programs is going to be very, very complex. Or if it's a machine which is misbehaving, it's going to be so interconnected. So it's going to be hard to figure out whether it's the input that's at fault or what is at fault. So the students need to be able to create a model. Uh, it was read as part of the NASCOM report that Fixing problems is going to be a big challenge when we get into the industry 4.0. Dealing with information overload. We are today flooded with information. Picking the right information from that, filtering out a whole heap of irrelevant stuff and focusing only on the few that are relevant to us, that's going to be an issue. Computational thinking. Automation is everywhere and automation is achieved by computers today. A lot of automation is achieved through computers. So computational thinking, the ability to express any solution or any problem as a sequence of steps that can be executed by a computer. Yeah. That's going to be very key for all students, irrespective of the field they're studying, irrespective of the branch of engineering that they're studying. Yeah. It's going to be important that they are able to uh, think in a computational way. Working in team, the fact that they're Systems are going to be complex, the problems are complex, no individual can solve them. And so you need to be able to work in a team. Individuals just are, won't be able to cope with the problems of tomorrow. Design thinking, this is key. So you need to be able to think design. Gone are the days of the earlier industrial revolutions where knowledge of mathematical formulas, knowledge of engineering tables, knowledge of engineering formula, and applying that same knowledge in your at your work was enough. Today, what you you just can't just directly apply knowledge. You have to solve problems. You have to think independently. So this problem of rote learning, which is this entire education system today has as a big limitation, which is being able to study formulas, study programs, questions you are asked up from what you have read in your textbooks. If it goes out. Somebody or the other complains, maybe parents saying it's out of syllabus. That mindset needs to change. They have to be trained to be able to solve problems that they have never seen before. Because that's what they will be doing in their careers. 
they are not going to be thrown textbook problems in their jobs. They're going to be faced with problems that they'll say, oh gosh, I've never seen this before. How do I solve it? And they need to solve it. That's very important when you're talking of, uh, so that's something which we need to really focus on. And no amount of knowledge that is imparted during the four years or six years or five years, three years of their education is going to be sufficient for them through their career. They will have to continuously learn and keep themselves updated. So we shouldn't be looking at the four years of education as imparting knowledge, but we should look at them as imparting skills that are required for, and the skills include the ability to solve problems, to be able to learn, adapt, whatever it is. So that shift needs to happen in the way we educate. Till now we've been looking at it as just imparting knowledge, which would be some mathematical formulas, proofs, computer programs, standard programs that they write, sorting algorithms, whatever it is. So how should the curriculum design take shape? First, we should, any curriculum that is designed, it should look at, okay, what are the skills that I'm going to, I'm preparing my students for? And then what, how do I impart those various skills? Or what subjects do I teach to impart those various skills? And how is that subject imparting that skill? It has to be a top-down design uh, and not just a bottom-up with saying there should be three math mathematical courses, there should be two computer science courses, there three programming languages need to be taught. Yeah. Today it's largely uh, bottom-up where uh, there are these credits which need to be given and completed. Instead, we need to start thinking of and each of you is from a different college very with a very different student uh, mindset, a very different uh, student distribution and therefore what you would like to, what you can prepare your students for and what you would like to prepare your students for will be different. In fact, each of you will have a different skill set yourself and it's different interest yourself. And it's that skill set that you can best impart uh, to your student as opposed to preparing them as a very standard. So we need to think top down, design the curriculum that way, exploit modern technologies. There are MOOCs that are available. How can we exploit this availability of MOOCs to reduce uh, classroom teaching burden and imp instead focusing on imparting skills? We need to think of that. Government of India already has uh, guidelines which allow you to use MOOCs. Are we using them? Are we using them effectively? Have, given, have we given it thought on where can MOOCs be used effectively? How can it be? How can it complement whatever is being taught or a supplement? Flexibility in curriculum. Yeah. Again, today there are some, I, I, I hope I am wrong here, but there is a general uniformity in curriculum across colleges. Today, most colleges are thinking, how do I introduce Python? If they are a computer science, how should I teach Python to? Or it would be, how do I teach them R with machine learning? Yeah, it's, the thought process is very similar uh, across uh, institutions and that needs to change. We need to provide, produce a variety. The output of from these institutions has to be a wide variety of skilled sports and as opposed to a very uniform uh, skilled workforce. That's something we need to worry about. Delivery is of course key. Just designing a curriculum is not good, good enough. How it's getting delivered and ICT Academy hopefully is doing a great job on conducting workshops on how content can be delivered, whatever the content be. So the last point is there are 4,000 plus engineering colleges. Having the same curriculum just doesn't make sense. The students are different, the, their skill sets are different, what they are taught is, it's just at the same time you have an AICT curriculum put up out there and everyone just picks that up and starts teaching. It just doesn't gel. 4,000 colleges, you can imagine the number of students and you're saying all of them have to learn the same thing. No, they don't need to. And unfortunately, as a country, for us, engineering is the thing everyone does. Instead of being able to do, some go for fine art, some go for, uh, we don't have that variety there. We, we, most of them, for whatever reason, social pressures, cultural pressures, everyone says that my child needs to do engineering or medicine, some, a very small set of things. Whereas the skill sets required are very varied. 
in the industry 4.0 era the skill set is going to be even more varied fine arts gaming everything is going to be very critical it's not just being able to solve mathematical formula yeah we need those of course but we need all of it patch educationals you are very familiar with this the complexities it is a hard challenge it's not an easy problem to solve i don't think there is an easy solution at all there are too many skills that need to be taught that skills are very abstract like logical thinking complex problem solving how do you train a student for that i don't know if there can be a fixed curriculum that trains them for it so it's a hard, very very hard problem all that we can do is okay hope teach them some complex maths or teach them some complex logic and hope it prepares them for uh being able to deal with that situation in their skills and today there is inadequate research that's another area where we as a country lack education research do we have any publications which say we teach the following course curriculum and this is how our students perform 10 years later we don't have that kind of publications at all we don't have a research that correlates what is being ta taught in the classroom versus how the students are performing uh, several years later what content works what doesn't work we just don't have that kind of research so i think it's important that i urge that many of you do consider conducting education research as a way of doing research that's an area which is going to contribute towards how, how we produce better career oriented students what needs to be taught has to be understood today that's not very well understood because there isn't sufficient research knowledge and fundamentals so for example there is always a debate on should we teach python c c++ should i teach one programming language three programming languages as an example as a computer scientist i'm more familiar with that domain but i'm sure this exists across uh, various domains of engineering we need to do research to find out there is you ask 10 people they give 10 different answers it's only objective research that can really answer that question it cannot be opinion and what is required is changing very very rapidly it has never changed fast as fast as today so you can't keep changing a curriculum every 6 months so how do we generate a robust curriculum that caters to this changing it one way is to prepare them to learn teach them such basic fundamentals that enables them to learn teach them creativity it is important what it is but some basic fundamentals that enable them to learn but we need to understand all that yeah here is another point that i want to make we need to empower colleges today there is too much of centralization and this is not by me there is my mary shaw which they have uh, based on some research creative innovative curricula come from individual colleges and universities and not from large committees large committees are constrained by the thoughts of various committee members there is individual colleges each individual is free can afford to be creative so colleges need to be empowered to be able to do that decentralized curricular design curriculum design which is not true today pune university has some several affiliated colleges there is one board of study which decides what the curriculum is and that board of study goes to the extent of giving templates of question papers assignments that need to be done in classes it's here we are talking of industry 4.0 about creativity variety learning and everything and on the other hand we are saying boss here is one superman who is going to decide everything for you just won't work we need to change yeah assessment the key culprit is assessment today every college thinks unless my student gets 70% tcs is not going to take him assess in a manner that tcs just can't compare to colleges some of you give grades some of you give percentile some of you give you know you look at how telephone uh, mobile companies market themselves you just can't compare two of them yeah one will say i have a camera one will say i have got a video i have got this i have got that that's how you should produce that organizations like tcs infosys and all should not be able to take based on your mark then you are free to you know set tough questions have open big exams today 
and you're constantly saying that if I do that, he's not going to score marks, TCS is not going to select it. And let centralized agencies worry about how to assess. So for example, TCS has already started a programming test where, and they use that as a medium. And that works for them for multiple reasons. One is it's impossible for TCS to go to 4,000 plus engineering colleges. Even a company like TCS can't. So startups just forget it. So it just makes much more sense for all of them to have a centralized end. And you free yourself of the burden of assessing for the industry. Don't. Your academic institute should look at preparing them for the industry as opposed to assessing them for the industry. So the marks that an academic institute should not be something that an industry can use for anything. It's just for internal consumption and uh, yeah. So uh, trying to be on time, uh, this is the basic few points that I want to see. Curriculum design uh, needs to be top down based on what are the skill sets that you're preparing your students for and how you want to what are the subjects that will impart those skills? It's primarily skills oriented today rather than knowledge oriented. That's a shift that we need to get. So again, being familiar with computer science, I will say programming language when you're teaching, it's not about teaching syntax of C or Python. It's about writing programs, which is a skill independent of the programming language. Once you learn programming, you should be able to pick up a new programming language without a problem and code in that. Yeah. Whereas students today say, but we were taught C, therefore I don't know how to do Java. They're all same. It's just about learning the fundamentals. It has to be decentralized. We can't have 4,000 odd colleges having very similar curriculum. They need to be very, very different. We need to be creative in terms of the courses that we teach. We need to be creative in terms of the content. We need to be creative in, in various ways. Creativity has to come there. Teaching should be aligned. It has to be a good mix of theory and practice. When we say skills, skills are imparted through practice. Projects that they execute, seminars that they deliver. Yeah. Today, seminars are all cut paste. Projects are all large, a whole heap of it is cut. Those are things that need to. And the reason that they are all cut paste is because cut paste fetches them more marks than any original content. Whereas we should say original content, even if it's in terms of quality poorer than a cut paste, should fetch more marks. That's the way you all can change. Uh, disincentivize copy paste. Student assessment needs to be completely decentralized. Yeah, we just can't have the same scale for everyone. It has to be different. And let industry worry about assessing them. You do not do that job for the industry. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.